Welcome to another round of exploring and testing some of the new masking features in Adobe, specifically using them in Lightroom on the iPad. Now, I previously made a video about the select subject mask and the sky masking. This video is going to be about the color mask and luminance mask. If you're interested in the subject or sky mask, go ahead and check the link in the description. Otherwise, Let's get into it. So I've selected a few photos that I wanna test these out on, and I have already gone through and applied some presets, made some tweaks, and really edited these to a good foundation. This is not a full editing tutorial, but really diving into these new tools that Adobe has brought to Lightroom. So these photos were all taken at Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado, which has a lot of canyons and valleys, overlooks, as well as some ruins from the Pueblo people that used to live there. So we're gonna dive in. Looking here at this first image, you can see they've also had a lot of wildfires. So there's a lot of burning that's happened here and now there's regrowth happening underneath. So you can see all these dead trees and then the brush on the, on the foreground. We're gonna go in and on our right hand side, we're gonna go into our masking. We're gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign down in the bottom right. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the color range mask. So if I click color range, you're now gonna have a selector up here in the photo. I can click and drag this around and you're gonna see the masking adjust. Everywhere that it's red means that's where our mask is going to be applied. So if you want to maybe go up into the top, adjust some of the colors on that high end, or maybe down in the foreground, there's some maybe details. So to me for this, photo, the greens and yellows in the brush is not exactly what I want. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. One moment, please. Why is that not turning off? There we go. All right, now that that's off, let's get back to it. So as I'm dragging around, also in the circle, you can see that the color itself is showing us what color we're trying to select. So right about here is gonna be good for me. You can see that's a lot of the darker greens. So you can also refine this. Right now it's pretty much 50-50. If I just go ahead and drag that all the way down, it's going to narrow the bandwidth of green that it's going to affect. And if I bring that all the way up, it's going to affect more and more of our image. So I'm going to go back down probably a little lower than 50% to where we're just impacting some of those darker spaces. So if I hit apply, we've now kind of settled in the mask of what the mask is going to be. And now you can go in and make your adjustments. So I'm gonna go and play a little bit too hard with this and show what you can do. So if you just go ahead and hit the exposure all the way up, that looks horrible, right? But you can see what's actually happening in the image. What I want to do in here is I'm gonna go into my colors and I want to just warm it up a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna bump my temperature and then I'm gonna go back up into the light basic settings and pull up some of those shadows in that area. Now again, I'm only infecting a small portion of this photo, so you're not gonna see the same level of impact that you would if you were to make that same adjustment as a global adjustment to the image. Now again, just to show some of the extreme here of what's actually happening, is if I just pull that all the way to the end, my tint all the way up, you can see a lot is happening that doesn't look good at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back right about there. And saturation, again, you can push all the way up, see some of the extremes, pull it all the way down. But we really wanna be subtle with these. That's gonna be the key with all of these, with my entire approach to editing is subtlety. You wanna make some tweaks that are intentional and not go overboard with things because then anybody's gonna look at that image and just look at the colors as opposed to the shadows or the subject. You're going to want a balance of all of those and that comes from subtlety in your editing. So now that we've made a few of those adjustments here with the color range, I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus sign again and go into our luminance range. Again, you can see a very similar user experience where I have this circle on the image and I can drag this around to create my mask. Now I know that I want to do something with the highlights in the sky. That's now also capturing a lot of the highlights in that foreground, which is totally fine. But you can, again, down here in the bottom, expand the amount that it's impacting or shrink that down. Now, I kind of liked where it was. I think that's okay. And again, you can change how harsh of a fall off is it. And I want it to be right about there. So again, I'm gonna hit apply, and now I can start making my edits. 
So I'm going to raise the temperature of that because what I want to have happen here is this was a sunrise photo and the sun was still pretty low on the horizon and as you can see the sun was hitting this top area and the other side of this range as well as the foreground here but the valley the other side of the valley is still in shadow and I really want to make that more pronounced so I'm going to like I said bring up the temperature there and also add some orange into that on this side now what I'm getting is a nice hard fall off on that side there where there's a lot more orange glow on that side and in the valley it's not there but now it looks a little wonky and so I don't want it to be kind of a black and white situation so I'm going to go ahead and add a second luminance range and pull into this mid ground area I'm going to tighten that up just a bit maybe not have it so far on that side hit apply and now I'm going to come in and adjust the temperature of that but not nearly as much as I did on the first one. So if I add just a little bit in there, now it looks a little bit more natural of a fall off and roll off into the valley. So there you go, that is the first photo using both the color range and two different luminance masks. You can really see from a before and after, this is before any edits, any of the presets or other adjustments that I made to this image, and then adding all of those edits along with these new mask tools. Sorry to interrupt, but Aaron from editing future Aaron here. And I just wanted to say that this is the first video that I am editing on the new Mac mini. This is the M1 version and I plan on doing some videos here on the channel about it. So make sure and hit subscribe so that you know when those videos come out. So we're gonna jump ahead and look at this image here. This is some of those ruins from the Pueblo people. I've already applied my edits in terms of a preset and other adjustments. And I'm going to go ahead and jump straight to my masks. So I'm going to do the color range. And I really like the way that the stone looks in this image. I don't love how the green, the grass, and the different bushes are looking around this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that down into bushes there. And so far, looking at where all that red shows up, I can see that this is pretty much picking up exactly what I want. But if I wanted to, I could pull that down. But now I can see that not all of the bushes are being captured. If I go up a little bit, now I can see that some of the stone is being picked up. So I'm going to bring that back down pretty much right to 50-50 and hit apply. Now I can go into my colors and adjust that. I'm going to put a little bit of purple in there, pull back on my saturation and warm that up. Again, I'm going to say it, subtlety. I'm not going overboard with these adjustments because I don't want it to look like that. That is not what we're going for. We want to pull that in, just warm it up a little bit. Pull that saturation back just maybe another tad. Now to me, looking at the before and after of that image, that looks much more natural and what I experienced when I was there at Mesa Verde National Park. But if we wanted to, we could go in and add a luminance range because there is a lot of contrast in this image. So I'm gonna go in and maybe find a spot on the bricks about there, but I'm gonna narrow that in a little bit. So now I can go in and I'm gonna pull back on the exposure of this area just ever so slightly. Some of those highlights, just a tad. Now you can come back down to the right hand side where your masks are showing up and you can click on that to show, if I click on these a little bit, you can see when it flashes red, that's where your mask is at. Now I can go back if I wanted to play with that color range again. That one's there as well. So you can go back and forth. These aren't permanent, just like everything else in, in Lightroom. You can undo these. You can go back to your original. Make sure and save versions along the way. Let's go ahead and do one more photo. This is of another set of ruins, but across from a canyon. So Again, I've already applied some edits to this image and now we're just gonna jump into our masking. Let's go ahead and jump to our luminance range first this time because I can tell you that the rock in the foreground is not exactly as I would like it. I do want it to pick up a lot of the stone in the background as well because I want those to match. I don't want them to look too different, but I'm going to adjust this a little bit just to get exactly what I want. So I'm gonna jump into my light and pull back on my whites and in my colors warm things up a little bit add a little bit of tints magenta tint to that 
And I'm doing that because I want that to be in contrast to the green trees and other shrubs that are over this landscape. And that's a pretty subtle difference, but I, there was some harshness in the foreground stone that I was not in love with that I'm already seeing disappear just by the su subtle little edits that we've made so far. And if we wanted to, we could also come in here and add a color range. Again, just trying to fine tune that stone and how it looks. I'm gonna pull back a little bit on that. Hit apply and pull back on the exposure. Just bringing in some more detail there. What I am noticing is that pull that shadow of the cave over the, the ruins is getting a little dark by doing that. So we'll have to go in and adjust that, which I can also do with a mask. I can go in and use the radial gradient Pop that right there and add a little bit of light so that the ruins are not getting lost in this image. So there you go, that's the before and that is the after using those radial luminance and color range masks. Well, I hope you learned something in this. Make sure and give this video a thumbs up and a comment down below on how you plan on using these or any other questions you have about some of the new features in Lightroom. I'm having a lot of fun with these new features and being able to do even more professional work in Lightroom on the iPad here in the office and out on the go. So let me know what you think because I love learning from you all too. But until next time, I'm going to go make something. I hope you do too.